What's up, everybody? Welcome to part two of our GameScoop Gamescom wrap-up. I'm Damon Hatfield, joined by Andrew Goldfarb, hey. Max Scoville. Hey. Gentlemen, how are we feeling? Good. Day two. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I haven't been this tired since high school. <laughs> you know, you're not the only one. A few other of our uh, IGN friends are feeling tired. This Aww. is Destin Laguerre. Aww. Earlier today, falling asleep at his workstation. And that's not the only one. The head of, of our, our video team leader is also mm-hmm. feeling a little... Little little sheepish today. <laughs> so a, I was the friend went so good. I was doing this. I was I did this at my desk for a minute, and I was like, I can't fall asleep and like just start drooling and snoring. Like yeah. I, that would be very bad. So I kind of was just trying to, you know, just. And then I heard a, a, a camera click, and I like yeah. popped no, right up. Yeah. Yeah. And Fran was taking pictures of the live stuff. So I was like, I'm yeah. cool. But I could have been up there. Could have been You're me. Done the bullet. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta uh, take a walk. Walking helps. Yeah, it's the movement. Yeah, or eat the a, blood. Get the blood flow. Eat a coffee. I don't know. Eat, eat a, a coffee. coffee. Yeah. yeah, so games. So games. We're here. We're yeah. we saw a bunch of games. Yep. We saw even more games today. Mm-hmm. Uh, where to begin? Where to begin? How about Need for Speed? Let's Need do for it. Speed. Yeah, it was my, uh, it's my first car. thing I did this morning, I think. Uh, this is a really fascinating hybrid of really kind of everything. Because we've got these this incredibly realistic, I mean, racing game, obviously. Uh, and it's got live action. It's like a weird FMV revival. Act, yeah. Thing. yeah. But it, it looks good. Yeah. And I mean... mean I, yeah. I'm surprised the angle they took with it because, like, for, I mean, to me, I'm not, like, a huge car game guy. I actually like Need for Speed specifically, but, like, it, people want to see the racing in the cars, you know? Yeah. And I, it's surprising that, like, like during the press conference and, and during the stuff they're showing, they're focusing as heavily as they are on the live action stuff and on these, like, real life people. Yeah. Well, what I think is honestly kind of disorienting is that I don't, I don't know if there is live action car footage in here or if that's... <laughs> right. Either pre rendered yeah. or in game. <laughs> if the they, game just looks that They good. put up a series of screenshots of. Of their cars in engine, and engines in the car. Anyway, yeah. side by side, and it was like I. It was it, uh, the uncanny valley isn't like it doesn't apply to cars apparently. It's just not there. Uh, yeah. There's another layer to this too because uh, half those characters you see up there are fictional, like they're just their character. They're your they're your entourage like or, a whatever. Mechanic or whatever. Uh, yeah, and then the other ones, like the people you're going to be basically, I think, sort of doing races for, are existing actual sort of. Car people, they're like yeah. known racers. Yeah, and they, they each represent like a type of and like customization yeah. and like yeah. just I mean people who just you know, I don't know enough about cars to really yeah yeah. Well, but it's, like, it's supposed to be like you know, each of the ways you can play. So it's like you can so five, you, you yeah, want five of them and five different ways to play. And yeah. like one of them is like a, it's funny because there are like five different icons, but like one of them is several people. One of them is like a crew of dudes. Yeah. Uh, so I mean we've got this mix of of video game and and video and real life and fiction, and it's kind of it's really sort of fascinating. Watching this, like watching this trailer, or whatever, it doesn't. Again, like yeah, it doesn't feel like we're looking at a video game. Yeah, which yeah. is kind of bizarre. Uh, I mean, I, I said this to the um, uh, the person I was, I was speaking to um, afterwards, but you look at really old video game ads and like comic books, and the graphics were so low fidelity that the screenshots were just drawings. Like they sat yeah. someone down, it was like we can't photograph a TV that would look terrible, so they would just draw like you know pitfall. And now we're at a point where. You can't tell the difference between the game and you yeah, know an ad for it. Yeah. It's just and it's uh, it's kind of a. I, I, I think the game's gonna be fun. You yeah. know, I just haven't really seen enough of it. You know. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting that they're just it's just Need for Speed. Like it seems to be like back to basics kind of things, but yeah. at the same time, it's like yeah, like this trailer almost looks like it's for like a racing documentary exactly. rather than for yeah. like a video game. And it's clear they're kind of going after like the the, the Fast and Furious crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got that kind of sense of sort of kind of criminal underworld. You know. Uh, Underground racing, not really criminal, but like you know, you, the cops will come after you if you're because you're going to be speeding. Yeah, because yeah. you do have a need for it. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I like the approach they're taking. They're like, this is a fresh start. You know, this is a really old franchise yeah. that's been around for a very long time. So like, let's just, you know, let's stop tapping, tacking on you know colons and then buzzwords. Let's <laughs> just call it Need for Speed and see what that does. So it's, yeah. it's not the only game using uh, video this year too. Guitar Hero is also using. It's like know, live action yep, stuff. Also, live action yeah. video. Yep. Yep. So Which it's is weird. Yeah. It's weird to see full motion video come back and have it not look terrible. You yeah. Know? Yep. Yeah. This is a long way from Sewer Shark. <laughs> uh, okay, one of the most talked about games of the show is Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Yes. I uh, guess we got sort of uh, re- reintroduced to that at E3. And we finally, so like even at E3, they showed like that tiny little bit of, of gameplay like in that trailer. Mm-hmm. It was like mm-hmm. kind of a CG mix with also gameplay, but now like this is when we really saw the game. Yeah. Uh, and I think it looks awesome. I'm really yeah. stoked for this one. This looks incredible. Um, I totally agree. Do we know? I mean, we've. This is when it gets to the gameplay. We're seeing the gameplay, correct? Like this yeah. isn't just proof of concepts. No, this is the game. This is the gameplay yeah. that we're watching. Which is 
freaking incredible. Yeah. Yep. The movement is so, like, I just love the movement animations, like, even in first person. Like, it's like, when you're climbing, they just have, like, this very cool, like, fluid way of just moving. That even, like, even other games that do this, like, this first person parkour thing don't do it as well. Yeah. Also, there's a really, I mean, we're not playing it, and there's still a sense of weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, there's that, that sound of her hitting the ground. It just, it feels like, like, that's, that's some, a little bit of bass there. It's just, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. So is this open world? Did they say that? Yeah, at least there are open world sections of the city okay. that you can run around in and take on missions and side quests. Uh, but what was really interesting is that they said it's, they refer to it as a reboot and not a prequel. I think we, I was of the understanding that it was supposed to be a prequel to the first Mirror's Edge. Interesting. Yeah, I was too. So I guess what they're saying now is that the events take place before what happened in the first Mirror's Edge, but then I guess they'll... Well, you, but that one, they're saying... The events in the first mirrors that just haven't, haven't happened. happened. I see. They may or may not happen if they continue the story. But this is, they were very specific in calling this a reboot and not a prequel. That's really interesting. Yeah. I think it's cool, though, because it's, it's one of those games that people have been dying for a sequel so long that I don't think anyone cares what they're doing. Like, it, yeah. it, clearly this is Mirror's Edge, you know? Like, it's, yep. it's more of what people really want to see. It also sounds like they have, they've, they've hit on this, I think, both times they've shown it off at a press conference, saying that she doesn't need to use guns. Just, and yeah, people yeah. were always complaining that it turned into a shooter after being this really cool kind of high concept. Well, know? in this one, she cannot use guns. Right. You're not, you can't like they're really, they're, they, you cannot pick yeah. up a gun. I like that a lot. Which is, really cool it's kind of it's yeah. kind of ballsy to be like, hey, yeah. even if you want to, you can't. You know? Yep. Um, yeah. yeah. The, the, I guess the, we've, we've seen games with a ton of verticality and with, uh, you know, environments you can, you can enter and stuff. But I can't think of a game that I've seen that really, it, the sense of space is incredible. Like, it's... I don't. I, we don't know how how broad the city will be, or if it's really if it's all kind of just dense and enclosed, or if it's mm -hmm. more you know spread out. But like going through like vent shafts and through fire escapes, like that's crazy. So uh, another big game of the show, Rainbow Six Siege. Ubisoft announced uh, a uh, uh, what's a spectator cam mm -hmm. for the game. Which I don't know. It's a. Is that odd for them to an announce that? Like it's a. Well, it's cool because feature? I think it, it embraces the fact that this will be like closer to esports because they obviously want to get that like audience of like people playing competitively online and I think like or not competitively but you know streaming online a lot and I think like it's really interesting to do that and like show that like there's gonna be more people watching and like you can treat it more like an esport. But did you know that only one person can spectate? I did not. <laughs> That negates a little bit <laughs> yeah. what I just said. Then. So, the <laughs> wait. So one person can spectate. The yeah. So the, t the the game is five on five, and then there's an eleventh slot for a spectator. But oh. it's only it's only one person can watch the match. I well, see. they can they can stream it then. Yeah, couldn't that person stream? Yeah. Well, I mean, but any of them could stream. Well, sure. no, that's for. I mean, that's that's that's. That's an awesome feature. Like that's. I mean, I get the announcement now. You know. Why, well, but why? Why? What do you like about it? I mean, that's that's a person who's going to be like you know shoutcasting. Like they're going to be. Okay. It, they are. They are playing. They are. Okay. They're like playing. Okay. Uh, I didn't look at it from that. So they stream because they can see everybody. Yeah. yeah. So they can switch back. And, and so forth. they can be the. Okay. The yeah. Captain. So my esports point is valid sense. again. Like yeah. they are. They are yeah. both cameraman and and narrator essentially. Yeah. Like they're yeah. which is this is yeah this is fascinating. Okay. Now I totally get why yeah. you only let one person. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Um, yeah. How are you guys feeling about this game? Uh, I still haven't gotten hands-on with it. Uh, I hear it's really cool, really fun. I think it's one of those ones you, you re it really depends on who you're playing with, you know? Uh, if you're working together with a bunch of close friends and you're all kind of, you know, I mean, if you're hooking your you know, consoles up, whatever, yeah. land party type of thing, and communication is as simple as shouting across the room, that's probably awesome. Uh, if you're partnered with people who aren't necessarily trying for proper co-op, it's probably a nightmare because mm. it's a yeah. historically kind of an unforgiving game in terms of how you approach stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it would be a lot harder. Like, number one, yeah, you, you need to communicate, you know, because it's like it hurts your team so much like, the faster you lose people. So mm -hmm. I think, like, it is one of those games where, like, yeah, it'll be a lot better as long as you're working together. Yeah, I like this footage. The <coughs> whoever was playing was just, they were just getting owned. <laughs> So, so I, I believe this was Alex Simmons. Okay. I believe he, he went, to, not to call him out, but I, I believe he went and did this capture. Um, they also announced uh, the, Brit the German operators mm -hmm. is like one of the counter-terrorism you know, able, able to play as in the game. And that's uh, not just, that's not a German exclusive. That's going to be worldwide. <laughs> so like the, the oh, yeah, it's a good show to announce that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but the outfits that you play as are, are different counter-terrorism units, real CTUs from around the world. So mm -hmm. they announced the German one. For Interesting. That's fun. Yeah, makes um, sense. That's really cool. One thing I do I like about this that I'm really curious about how it works in action is the idea that each person kind of picks their own their own cl you know, class role, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a sort of each one has its own sort of polar opposite. Yeah. So you know it, it's I don't know that that's a that's a uh, very kind of there's a symmetry there that's sure interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely. Mean, yeah. They're trying to keep a balance. 
Uh, now, Max, you got to see Homefront the Revolution. Yeah. Um, so I was not, like, the first Homefront is a bad game. Like, mm. that is not a good game. Uh, this is a very different game from that. Like, this is a very, this is different people working on it. It's, uh, you know, similar, similar stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, open world, it feels very Far Cry in like all the best ways like the outposts love, and towers uh, and stuff yeah but you're in it you're in uh, Pittsburgh uh, I believe uh, and it's just really dense and I mean the idea is it's essentially it's essentially like cyberpunk or not cyberpunk a um, little bit cyberpunk uh, Red Dawn so North Korea has taken yeah. over and they run everything and there's like drones flying around and you have to hack the drones out of the sky but the emphasis on being part of a guerrilla a guerrilla force is really interesting, um, and it's like you know in, in like in Far Cry you're taking on these outposts and you're and you're doing this stuff, but you're also in like an isolated locale and you're also on your own for the most. I mean, you have people who kind of will come help you. Uh, in this case, it's much more it's much more dense because it's a city, and I guess there will be like there you know the, you, your your other forces will kind of be running around too. So you're you're going to come across them and they're having a firefight with other guys which you know we've seen that in like Far Cry 4 had that but in this case it's it somehow fe seems much more exciting and real because you're in this city uh, if a fight gets too dangerous you can just run away uh, they really I don't know it's it's a it, it seems like there's a lot of potential here uh, the weapon system is there's a lot of really neat stuff they're doing I was worried it was going to be too like uh, trying to be not the shooter realism, let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, using real guns and keeping it realistically grounded. Uh, but they've taken a little bit of liberty, and there's there's uh, almost almost a, I'm not going to say Dead Island-esque modification, but mm. you can put this thing on the front of your shotgun barrel that makes it shoot fire, yeah. which I don't think works in real life at all. But, that's real life. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just, Shotgun. and there's, like, you can, there, there are ramps everywhere, uh, so you can get on a motorcycle and drive up on a rooftop, and it just looks like there's... Um, a lot more fun to be had there, and I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan of just kind of emergent gameplay and games that really allow uh, allow experimentation and creativity, while at the same time, you know, offering a you know kind of a yeah. fun challenge and make you feel like a badass. Uh, and this one seems like it's kind of it's kind of doing that well. Yeah, it it's, seems like it's benefiting from the open world, which yeah, is cool. Because that's what I was gonna ask. So it yeah. is an open world game. Yeah, uh, and there's a you know there's a story there. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm 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 very curious. You know, did they talk yeah. about any multiplayer? Uh, they didn't actually. Uh, I should have. I should have hit on that. But um, yeah, it's, it's the the campaign element and the open world side of it is is cool. Yeah, it seems like it's it's one of those franchises that like not that I completely forgot about it, but it's like it's, yeah, a really interesting thing to revive and and try something new with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess it's it's a great concept for a game. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. So y this this game should work. Yeah. Right. So I, I totally get them wanting to take another crack at it. It's this weird thing where when I think of Homefront, I think of that thing where they released like a million balloons in San Francisco and they're yep. like everywhere. And the uh, Dillinger escape plan played. <laughs> really? That was the thing that happened when they were promoting the first Homefront. That was a weird time. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar, this is uh, the Homefront um, license property, IP, whatever, was purchased uh, during THQ's closure by Deep right. Silver. And this is them yeah. kind of uh, punching it up and doing stuff with it. And yep. Yeah. Except um, for next year? Yeah, that is slated for, I think, early 2016. Okay. All right, one of the games that I was super impressed with today uh, that isn't as high profile as some of these other games is Divinity Original Sin Enhanced Edition. Have you guys been following this game? Mm -mm. Um, this is a, an old school style RPG that came out on PC last year, I think. And now the Enhanced Edition is coming to PC and consoles. Uh, but this game is, there's so much detail in this game, and you have so many options uh, for a way to approach things. And they also do this really cool thing with uh, local co-op, couch co-op. So uh, I, I'm sure we can bring up footage here, but your friend, your, you have a party of like four or five, uh, yeah, as you can see there, four or five heroes. And you can choose which one you're in control of at any time, and then a friend can just hop on the couch, oh, jump into the game, and take control of someone. And if you guys go your different ways, it just goes into split screen. That's, and you oh, can each really go cool. and do whatever you want in that's, this world. That's, that's right? awesome. Uh, it's awesome. And okay. then if you come back together, it just goes out of split screen. It's uh, awesome. That's, that's cool. really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's like what the, the Lego games do that when you have split screen. It's like I really mean, smart. To an ex yeah, to an extent. This, but I mean, you can basically, can you basically have two simultaneous campaigns, right? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, wow, okay. You could, you could both be completing different quests at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, I, this is, this is, it's got kind of a, you know, dungeon crawly aesthetic, but mm -hmm. this is a, a serious, like, uh, heavy lore RPG with yeah. character customization yeah. and everything, yeah. Uh, pretty much every object in the game can be interacted with. Uh, Battles are turn-based, but when you're not in a battle, you're just, you know, roaming freely. I think I might have seen, seen this at one point. Does it have, um... 
Does it have battles that use a lot of environmental stuff? Yeah, exactly. Okay. There's, so the elements are very important. So uh, if someone set you on fire, uh, if, if it's raining, the, it'll, the rain will put out the fire. Or if uh. there's a poison gas, you can ignite the poison gas with fire to burn it away. And so the elements are very important in this game. But like we were in this battle against this really uh, difficult boss, so we switched to another player who was not in the battle, and they went to find the the, the wizard that had uh, built this robot boss, and we asked him like how like what are, what is what are his weaknesses. So we learned how to beat the boss from the wizard, and then we were able to go and help oh, the rest of our team. So yeah, cool. That's really awesome. Really cool. Yeah, that's really smart. Uh, and that's coming out this year. That's coming out in October. Yeah, I want to I want to point out that uh, I feel like with with isometric games or you know top down games it can be very easy to just not look closely at the graphics yeah yeah graphics in this are really really good yeah they're very detailed uh, uh, do you know what engine this is running in i don't okay yeah it's just it's incredibly pretty and but they mapped it to a controller uh, yeah it looks great on controllers so yeah super stuck so for that that's divinity it's, original sin it's got voice yeah. actors in it yeah. i saw wow <laughs> that's a voice right. acting. that's awesome now another game i got to see was tony hawk's pro skater 5 okay yeah. let's yeah let's talk about style, this right? what's up with that so isn't it weird that they 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 switched the uh, the art style sort of unexpectedly like very right before yeah it comes out in a month and you know when I, when I was I was talking to the developer I was like you guys changed the art style style all of a sudden he was like well we we've been working on the art style for a long time you know it seems like a sudden shift to all of us but not to them well I mean like it is brighter it is colorful like to me that's cool I mean that looks I mean I think so you know let's let's just be honest I think the reason why is because. Many people had remarked that this game did not look particularly right. amazing. They but were kind of going for, for a, a PlayStation 4, Xbox yes, One game. They were going right. for realism with some st stylization, but it wasn't. You know, yeah. what other game actually did this was the first Borderlands. Yep. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, I think like, Borderlands. I think that uh, artistic choice was a great. Yeah. One. But yep. I mean, there's you can see those early early footage where it was going for realistic. Yeah, it was like kind of typical like a yeah, three game. Look, look kind of whatever, you know. And yeah. then it's like they made this sudden cell shading and it popped and it looked really cool and. Uh, I, you know, I've seen screenshots of this and it doesn't look good. In, a, in action, it looks, it looks all right. I, I mean, I think actually, I think it does look a little bit better with the associated yeah. yeah. graphics. But it's hard to get a sense of uh, how fun the game will be because we just have footage of a single player skating around. There's no music. There's no music in this footage and the music has always been a really it's important like a part of Tony super, Hawk. Yeah, right? totally. Like, mm -hmm. I think I've probably heard super, uh, Superman by Goldfinger like 300 trillion times yeah. this game. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it is weird to have no music. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's a, it must be a licensing issue. But sure, of course. Yeah, and I guess you can set your own, theoretically. Uh, and then there's also, you're always, un unless you, like, unplug your uh, PS4, Xbox One from the internet, you're going to be online. And you just sh you share a server with 20 other uh, players. Interesting. Can yeah. you, like, skate into them and knock them over? See, I don't... Is it, like, yeah, a like shared world, or is yeah. it... It's, uh, you know, whatever park you, you pick... Uh, you're going to be in there with 20 other people or 19 other people. Do you have to, to wait to use the half pipe if there's somebody in there? <laughs> <laughs> you can just like... <laughs> yeah, they said that you can like work on missions together, but I'm not sure exactly how it works. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So I don't, I don't know about this one. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's, that's always, uh, always concerning when there's a big, very public change like that because so often yeah. the messaging and presentation of games is really very curated and manicured. Yeah, and it, especially this late, right? It's like a... It's a weird thing because, like, uh -huh. if someone was excited for the game, it's like, like they've done, they've taken pre-orders already at this point, like all that stuff. Like, yeah. it's, it's it's interesting. Yeah, that's I think those are the bigger games that we saw today. But we still have another day that we're streaming tomorrow. There's still yes. one more day of the yep. show. Uh, actually, doesn't the show go through Sunday? The show, yeah, I believe yeah. the public days yeah. go through. To we're Sunday, here yeah. one more day, but the show actually goes through Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Uh, all right, thanks, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I think we're. I think we've earned. Is this a, it? I think we've earned a Kolsch. An ice cold Kolsch. Oh, oh no, just I see, yeah. yeah. Just sleep okay. forever. Oh, nice. Just sleep forever. Uh, so we'll be back tomorrow, uh, bringing you more games from Gamescom right here on IGN Live. So uh, we'll see you guys then. Thank you.